What's up guys, Michael James with Beyond the Forbidden. Do you want to receive extra content that's not viewed anywhere else? Support Beyond the Forbidden on Patreon to receive plus content that is only exclusive to members of Beyond the Forbidden. Content like the full two-hour podcast, bonus shows, full-length video interviews, behind-the-scenes footage with guests, and much more. So what do you have to lose? Go to patreon.com forward slash beyond the forbidden. That's patreon.com forward slash beyond the forbidden and become a member of Beyond the Forbidden for just five bucks a month. And also check the description for the links. Coming to you from an undisclosed location somewhere in the northern hemisphere waiting out the alien apocalypse. He is armed with a machete and a microphone. Join Michael James as he seeks answers to the paranormal, conspiracies, ancient mysteries, and the occult. Are you ready to trip the fuck out? This is... Beyond the Forbidden. Welcome to Beyond the Forbidden. Today on the show, January 1st, 2023. I got Jeff Harmon. You can go to his website, which is Jeff Harmon, J-E-F-F-H-A-R-M-A-N.com. Welcome to the show, Jeff. How you doing? I'm doing good. Thanks for having me. So, so let's go ahead and throw all your uh, social medias and everything else out there in the beginning. So uh, what other platforms would you like for everybody to go check out? Well, we're just getting going. We actually, you know, I've been doing radio shows for many, many years, but I, I now have a uh, a YouTube channel. Uh, you just go to Jeff Harmon Astrologer, and uh, we got some really good YouTube channels on there, or I should say videos, and we're going to be putting a lot more up. And then also we're working on a show that's actually going to be put on there pretty soon. So the Facebook, we're just getting going on and rumble and all that. So it's the same thing. Jeff Harmon astrologer, you just go on that. And, um, you know, that's, that's the way it, it works. So yeah. And then of course the website is jeffharmon.com, you know, Jeff at jeffharmon.com is the email. So, so, so I've been trying to look for alternative YouTube platforms also, uh, with BitChute. Um, I mm. I have my Facebook page manager, Peter. I have him access to my BitChute account. So he's trying to transfer a lot of YouTube stuff over there. But with uh we also have Odyssey, but I haven't transferred everything over there yet. And with Rumble, I have a few things, but is Rumble do you have to, is the is the storage limited or is it unlimited storage just like all the other platforms? I don't know much about Rumble. I uh, don't, but, but, but it's getting is, popular, though. Yeah. It's getting popular. Yeah, That's it's, what I was it's starting to get popular. Uh, I'm just playing around with it right now. I don't really know a lot. Uh, um, the Camille, my wife, and Ella, they, they both know a lot about that stuff I know, and I just do the shows. And <laughs> Yeah, I, 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 I need to get my Peter, my Facebook page manager. He's usually my helper on a lot of things, get him to look into it. But, mm-hmm. man, sure. I, I'm, I'm super pumped to have you here. Um, so... I guess maybe for the first hour, we're going to be talking a little bit about astrology and we're going to tie some stuff sure. in, you know, like the new world order, stuff like that, uh, mm-hmm. dark and demonic satanic entities and all that. But we're going to probably maybe towards a little bit towards the end of the first hour. But if it, it's all, I think it's kind of all connected and I would think you would agree, Jeff. And we'll, oh, yeah. and, and of course we will try to connect all the, these dots. But um, we'll just try to save the deep, dark stuff a little bit towards after the 45 minute mark or so. Sure. But sure. so so how how and why did you first, Jeff, get interested in astrology? Like, well, what, what led you down that path in, in the beginning? Well, for me, it started in the mid 70s. It was uh, my mother and um, I started driving right around 75-ish, something like that, 76 ish So it was somewhere in that area. And, um, you know, I had the girlfriends, and my mother would peg them to the T, and I would say, what are you doing here? And uh, 
she said, well, I've got their charts. And I said, well, what do you mean their charts? And she said, well, I have their astrology charts. And I said, come on, that stuff doesn't work. You know, you got to remember, I grew up in northern Wisconsin. It was like Dukes of Hazard up there. I, I think I drove semis. Man, it's I cold up there. Wow. Oh, it's really cold. <laughs> yeah, it's all logging. You know, it was a bunch of cutting trees and logging and everything. You know, it's just the way it is. And I, it was a great place to grow up. But, um, yeah, you know, so I, I was very questionable to astrology. And then what happened um, when I started looking at it, you know, my mother said, well, you know, before you knock it, you know, get, give it a shot. And she was a pretty smart lady. She was into uh, hemodialysis and she was in the medical field. And um, once I started poking around with it with her, I, I had to say, you know, this is way beyond chance. And then my journey kind of you know, spiraled into all kinds of things in the eighties. I had uh, a studio. I was working a lot with commercials and design work and we did, uh, you know, everything from radio and television commercials to a lot of that kind of stuff and musical groups, a lot of fun. And, um, what happened was, um, uh, I ended up really delving deeper and deeper into it. It just kept pulling me in. And then I started running into some of the Eastern stuff and the Egyptian and the Chaldean and the Vedantic, meaning Vedic astrology. And um it's a never ending journey. And I don't think any astrologer will ever figure this out. But one thing's for sure. I always say, forget Trinity, Neo and Morpheus, because I really believe the more I crack into this, uh particularly the ancient astrology of the Nadi astrology, which is a branch of Vedic astrology. And also the uh the Egyptian, when you when you really in Chaldean and Greek, when you really look at the roots of where this stuff comes from, there's no question that the solar system as we know it is not just a bunch of planets and masses and gases and all the stuff that astronomers say, which it is. I'm not denying that it's not. Of course it is. And I love astronomy itself and I love physics and science. But on the other hand, I would say that um, when you look at it from the point of what's happening to us as souls, as physical experiences, as physical beings, you know, I, I could tell you it's a matrix and you, you'd have to uh, be completely in denial of reality to not see the correlations, uh, particularly in Nadi astrology. It's stunning. It really is. Uh, we all have free will and we all need to act with our free will. But I think the ancient stuff is so different from modern sun sign astrology. You know, what, what really was a shame is the age of reason and the industrial revolution, all which came in quite strongly in the 1700s, which was very much indicated by astrology. Uh, what happened there is I really think we had such a separation between the spiritual knowledge of the world and, you know, many Tartarians out there will see this type of stuff. And, um, a lot of history that we've been told is completely bunk and it's been rewritten and redirected. And there are forces here on this planet that I think are really uh, against the consciousness and awareness of humanity. And it's always been a force to try and suppress it, divide it, and destroy humanity. And yet humanity survives in light of it. So I, I really think that the astrology or astronomy, see, that's what I love about the ancient worlds, is they were really looking at the astronomy and extrapolating that into human experience, where today we have this complete division of astronomy only and astrologers. And um, it needs to come together in the middle. And that's that's always an area that I'm really interested in. They both they both work together back in the ancient times, Jeff. Astronomy and Well, they're one and the same. They're they're one and the same. That's, uh, where, that, where, that's my point. Where does astrotheology astrotheology kind of tie in with uh you know with the heaven the heavenly bodies being almost worshiped as as these as the gods you know to where because there's a lot of mythology when it comes to the ancient a roots lot. of christianity uh pa paganism first and then paganism it they because back then the skies was our television and that was does that have any role with 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 all of this there's maybe all three of them did that have a role in the ancient of times astrology uh astro theology and astronomy yeah i i think again i st i say they're one and the same <clears throat> it's all the way you look at it um you know you take yeah 
the whole pantheon of gods and, you know, most of your ancient cultures would worship all these different gods. I mean, anyone has to watch the, uh, the movie Troy and you start seeing, you know, that was depicted in there too. But yeah, what, what this really gets into is I think a, a fragmentation of what the ancient, ancient world was. And this might go back right squarely to an ancient text uh, that that I can cite. It's called the Sefer Ratziel. <clears throat> and there's many different versions of that book. But Sefer means book in Aramaic and Hebrew. And Ratziel is the archangel Ratziel. And it is believed to be a book that was brought by the archangel Ratziel to the original biblical Adam. Or you could say metaphorically the first human or first humans. And um, <clears throat> there may be a lot more truth to that than we know. And it's it's all these hierarchies of angelic forces. And when you get into this stuff, it's it's really a shame how much the religions have fragmentized this stuff. And not that the religions are directly to blame. I'm saying what's happened to them over the the millennia. <clears throat> it's like almost a complete fragmentation. And what happens is you know, you really get into first there's God, and then you have all these various hierarchies. <clears throat> In fact, one of the best ways I'm going to share a screen here and show you because it's, it's really a little bit too complex just to explain them. This diagram is simplistic, but yet it's very, very demonstrative of what I'm talking about. So let me do that. I'm going to jump over here to a, a quick diagram and you'll see here what I'm, I'm talking about. Let me see if I can find it. It is bing bong this one. Yes. So whatever your, the, you know, your religious belief or spiritual belief is, we all can probably agree, unless you're an atheist, that uh, there's some force above creation. Of course, we call it God, right? Mm-hmm. And beneath that, um, these, these are the words, ain't, ain't soft and ain't soft fours, where the light gets more and more focused or you could say concentrated <clears throat> and this first world up here is called the world of absolute absolute's a word in aramaic and hebrew that means where the upper upper heavens are there's no astrology up here there is no you know rotating galaxies and pluto and venus and pisces and aries it doesn't exist so this is where souls are believed to be created and this is very high divine stuff. And these are the class of angels that are believed to rule this dimension, which is the seraphims, the cherubims, and the thrones. They claim there's 49 dimensions and 49 subdimensions here, exceedingly vast. The next world down is Briya, or you could say, some people call it Briya, but uh, creation now starts to coalesce and get even denser. And again, these are the classes of angels that are believed to rule it. And again, there's 49 dimensions believed to be here and 49 subdimensions way vast. I mean, way beyond my comprehension. The next world's down is probably one that as most people are somewhat familiar with, and that is the solar, not the solar, but the, the universes. Um, and I do say that plurally universes. It's known as Yetzirah. And there's actually a, a Hebrew text called the Sefer Yetzirah, which means the book of formation. And you can see Yetzirah or Yetzirah means formation. And this is where the rotating galaxies are. And they claim there could be 49 parallel universes and 49 subdimensions in each one. And now we start seeing what you're talking about, the astrotheology, the pantheon of gods, which is also known in maybe other nomenclature as the archangels, the angels, the intelligences, and the spirits. And this gets into a whole plethora of stuff that really became known in the Egyptian, the Chaldean, the Greek, and all the way up through matriculating up into the medieval times, where there was a lot of magic that was done in Enochian and many other types of goetic magic, the Keys of Solomon, all this very dangerous stuff too, by the way, I might add, where spirits were summoned and still are. Uh, many secret societies still play with this stuff, and I think it's quite dangerous, and I'll explain why in a bit. But the long story short is, 
um, that is actually quite low in comparison to the upper divinity of the angels. And then once you get past the Etzeratic worlds, which are exceedingly complex, just to give you an idea, our little solar systems on the speck edge of the Milky Way galaxy, which is, is you know, huge in terms of time and space, it's huge. So the last worlds, the Saya, is known as the astral planes. And they claim there could be 49 parallel dimensions in the astral planes and 49 subdimensions in each one. And notice 49 is derived from nine. Yeah. So it's really, really interesting stuff. So nine means spiritual completion on the physical plane. And notice the last things over here on the far right. We see, you know, usually we get a guy with a suit tie and a microphone telling us about the devil, but it's just a <laughs> little bit deeper than that one. Uh, see, you got Lucifer, Satan, Belial, and Leviathan. These are the fallen spirits, but I might actually add the incarcerated spirits. And that's the thing that they don't want any human being to know at all. And the the fallen spirits are actually quite powerful. They're just as powerful as these guys up here, except they got one missing element. They don't have God forcing these guys into incarceration. These guys are incarcerated. I think right down to the molecular level, literally, into the atomic level. Um, So the bottom line is there's legions beneath that. Uh, there's eight sub princes beneath these guys, and there's legions upon legions upon legions beneath them. And they are actually forced to be a part of creation according to these models. Well, when we exit these meat suits known as bodies, uh, you know, w- which we call death, right? And a lot of people refer to as ghosts and haunting spirits mm-hmm. are really just errant wandering souls that are either trapped on the physical realm or they're trapped in the astral planes. And this is one of the things I loved about Vedic astrology. And, you know, Vedic astrology is kind of a pop term. Uh, Its real name is called Jyotisha. Jyotisha actually means the science of the light of the spirit and the soul. Um, There was was a gentleman named Chakrapani. He came from India in the 60s, and I I used to go out to dinner with him. He's a nice guy. He just passed away probably in his, I think, mid to late 80s. And he might have been the guy who coined this phrase, meaning Vedic astrology. He he said, you know, I don't think Americans are ever going to figure out what Jyotisha means because, you know, Jyotisha is a foreign language. And it's it's very much like Hebrew, Aramaic, Hebrew, and also your uh, Sanskrit, um, Tamil, and some of these very ancient languages, Dravidian. These are very, very ancient languages, and they're actually coded in phonetic numerology. And a lot of these ancient texts are encrypted like that. And this is why a lot of the Vulgate translations and other English translations of the Bible have really, really sorely lost some, not that they've lost the meaning, but they've lost the codes that deepen the meaning, the codes that really get into what is this stuff really all about, the the true matrix of this world, at least. And what I love about Vedic astrology is that you can see this white etheric energy this is just a plate out of the Bhagavad Gita, where it shows the etheric karmic energy, if you will. You know, we all hear about DNA now, right? The guy in Idaho just got busted from DNA. Mm-hmm. So DNA is yeah. very, very interesting. But this is more spiritual DNA. It's it's the fabric of not only who you are, but the interrelated connectivities of the soul's uh, you could say Gordian knot in a way, or connectivity to its soul roots. And that's not just mom and dad and grandma and grandpa and, you know, the person you married or the child you gave birth to. It could be some very mysterious interconnected weaving that connects us to all these different souls. You know, many people, you know, where's my soulmate? You know, all these different things or so-and-so was so mean to me. Well, you might have connections that manifest in this lifetime. And is, all it kind, that- is it kind of like a cosmic Wafa signal? In a way, well, it, it's like a fabric of of you you could say connectivity to yeah. to the previous incarnations, and it may not be just here. It's very deep stuff. It's way beyond what anyone's ever going to figure out, and it's very uh, tied back to. They actually say the guardian angel or an angel, whatever you want to call it, attaches the spirit psyche and soul to the embryo 
at conception, not at birth, at conception, and is by silver cord. And that silver cord is exactly this etheric energy we just saw here. And that is very interesting because conception, e- even the best scientists will tell you right now, there's something quite magical about that. There's like a flash of light when the sperm connects to the egg, and they don't know why. There's no, there's no LED. Can I interrupt no you fire. real quick? Can I sure, interrupt you? Sure. Um, and, and the floor is yours, like, cause you're, you're giving a great presentation, but I had to interject because, you know, I think I told you, um, <clears throat> that me and my wife, we, we just had a baby. I'm, she's 38, uh-huh. I'm 36. And we had to do it. Wow, awesome. We, yeah, she's four months old. I mean, four weeks old and we had to wow. do IVF in vitro. So mm. you, you just sparked something in my mind when I was in the room. Mm. When they shot these, mm. when they, I don't know, they actually shot the embryo. I know it's not the sperm because they already had the embryo. Right? Sure. But when, right, right. I don't, but it was something similar to what you just said. They had it on a screen, like mm. blown up. Mm. Right. Wow. And they shot it like, it looked just like a, you could see it. You could see it. It went in, sure. inside, I guess the, the uterus. And then it just. Yeah, wow. shot. It shot like a, and when it hit the embryo or when it hit hit the egg, I, I'm not a I'm not a scientist. No, no I get it. That's but, awesome. But, but it made like a spark yeah, of yeah. light. It made like a. Sp- I can't explain it. I'm telling I, you. I think I actually yeah. video it. I I I'd have to try oh, to wow. find it. I would I'll love to get. To, I would love to get a copy of that. I'll try to send because... it to you. either me or my wife have that. Mm-hmm. See, see, you know what? It, I'm so glad you you interjected because that is so cool because. You know, people have to realize, you know, these things called bodies, we all, you know, we, we all are young. And, you know, I remember when I was young, I was crazy, you know, riding motorcycles and horses, you know, we bounce off of stuff. And the older you get, the real, you realize the body is just temporary. It really yeah. is. And, you know, people, you know, I've, I've had the blessings of doing a lot of work around clearing properties and people and houses and hauntings and stuff like that. And you begin to see a lot of people don't even know that they're deceased. And there's a lot of great work done by psychiatrists and psychologists in this area and paranormal ex- ex- expressions. One of the, uh, I'm putting out a YouTube video on my U- a YouTube channel about this, about some of the texts you can go research this. And, uh, but back to what you just said, that's so cool because it's, it's really amazing when life comes and see, this is a really good topic because what's coming in on us right now, artificial intelligence. Yeah. And anyone who thinks that we are not going to be encroached upon, um, I think Elon Musk is right on one issue. And that is we're going to see AI overwhelmingly take over so many tasks that used to be done on assembly lines. It's already happening. Um, you, you're going to see like even in restaurants, we're seeing robots replacing waiters, you know, so we're, we're mechanizing the, the world and we're going to continue to do that with microprocessors. You know, there was a, a, what we call a Jupiter Saturn conjunction. Those happen every 20 years, but we just had a special one in 2020 and that ushered in the high tech revolution for the next 240 years, we're going to see this place get like the Jetsons and we will. Oh, wow. <laughs> it's, it's really coming folks. Um, well, look at where it is already. You know I mean? Yeah, I know. You've got self-driving cars, you got self-driving semis, you've got, you know, I mean, when I was watching, right the, when I was watching the Jetsons in the early nineties, Jeff, I was, I was hoping that we was already going to have a Jetson type world by now, you know, <laughs> but, but little <laughs> we, did I know that we, we know, might more than we can, think. Uh, but a lot of control and a lot of manipulation comes with that type of future or, or the possibility of that control and manipulation can come with that type of future. It depends on whose hands that technology is in. Yeah, that's right. But yeah, absolutely. We'll get into that in a minute. But one of the things that I wanted to finish on here, and I'm so glad you interrupted me because, you know, I, I always emphasize it to people. Life is magical. I don't care if it's animals. I don't care if it's plant. There's something going on to the organic process of spirit becoming manifest. And this is really interesting because what I was just on that diagram that I was just speaking about, that's exceedingly important because when you look at this, 
there is the ancients knew this is the sublunar worlds, meaning there is a whole zodiac between the moon and the earth. And everyone out there, if you know, I, I notice you're into ufology. I mean, something very special is going on with the moon here. I mean, when we not look just at the UFOs, moon, conspiracies, paranormal, ancient mysteries, yeah. and the cold. I I, I tackle I it all because I think it's yeah, all connected, yeah, Jeff. I think it's all connected. That's awesome. Yeah, it, it is. It, it's, everything's interconnected. The whole, entire universe, you bet. And um, wh- what I wanted to get into here was just in, let's stick with the human thing first, because you, you brought up your child and seeing that. I'd love to see that video, because what you just said, I, I hope everybody, you know, uh, tunes into this because it's so cool about life. They say there's a magic when that spirit, psyche and soul is assigned to the embryo. And they say that silver cord then um, is really with the, with the mother the entire period of the gestation, whether it's, you know, premature or after. So they say that the astrology or the matrix of the heavens, uh, which is really all angels and spirits, you know, the astronomers over here are, are measuring masses and gases and weights and velocities and all that, which is fine. It's all going on in the physical realm. But over on the other side, the, the ancient world was, these are all spirits, angels, and intelligences of very different hierarchies. And it's exceedingly complex. If, if you look at a text like the Sefer Ratziel, it won't take anyone long to realize, wow, there's angels that change shift at sunrise, noon, sunset, midnight, all these lunar aspects. You know, again, astrology is really the look at the movement of the heavens in astronomy versus action on the planet, which is very interesting stuff when you look at it from that standpoint. It, the woo-woo goes out of it, and you start going, well, wait a minute, this is a science, no different than electronics or electricity or any other you know, physical science. So long story short, to get, get to where I'm going. So you saw the conception flash, and I would love to see that video. So the, here's the theory behind Jyotisha, or you could say the ancient types of astrology. They say when the child exits the womb, its first breath, most children let out a cry, not all, but most do. And they say at that point, that's when the angel permanently ties the spirit, psyche, and soul to the body for the duration of the life, however long that is. And I always heard that legend. That's actually, for anyone who wants to look that up, That's there's a book called the Sefer Haggadah, which is a strange word that means the legends of the soul. So it's really, it's the, the book of legends is another term of it. So, and I'm not so sure they're legends because uh, profound stuff that is tying a lot of the ancient biblical stuff to the secrets that are interwoven in the codes in the Bible, which is also known in the Hebrew world as the Torah, which is the light so of creation. So here's what's interesting. I I always heard that legend, right? So when my son was born, Camille had to go C-section, my wife, right? So I'm holding her hand, and I'm in the delivery room, and they opened up my my, um, her, her stomach and I was actually watching. It's pretty graphic. So, you know, it's pretty amazing when you see all the fluids and stuff, not to be graphic here, but it's pretty heavy duty how complex we are. And out comes this, the cord and the dangling, you know, umbilical cord. And right when he cried, I saw two illuminations come in the room. I did not see wings. I did not see shapes. I just saw like light, two illumin, and boom, he cried. And I, it was just like magic. I mean, literally, I, I get, Hair stands up on my arm when I just talk about it. literally I could feel the angelic forces in the room. And uh I remember uh in the delivery room, I had said to the doctor, I said, he probably thought I was crazy. I said, you know, do you mind if I put some of these angelic squares up on the wall? He looks at me and goes, yeah, I don't care. So <laughs> I had some scotch tape and I'm taping them up on the four corners of the wall. And the reason why uh it was believed that spirits would always be around newborn children. Some people call it the demon Nama. And I put these up just for spiritual protection. Now, I, I believe they have a force that it keeps certain things away. And, you know, that's to each his own who believes what they want to believe. But I think sacred geometry and mathematics, I do this with gemstones. I actually make talismans for people, and we charge them on 
in the East, they call them yantras. In the West, we call them angelic squares. They're literally mathematical squares that resonate to, it's like a phone number to the angel. It's really, really interesting. So wow. long story short, that's the, that's the, the thing of creation. So no matter whether you're a flat earther or a round earther or whatever kind of earther you are, something is going on on this planet that has a celestial matrix to it that is really intertwined. And I think where astrologers really got off base was in the probably 1700s, the religious, you know, iron fist of the, uh, you could say, uh, industrial revolution actually came in right about 1762, right when George Washington was fighting in the French Indian War. And, uh, it was right about that time. And that was really the true ushering in of the industrial revolution. And <clears throat> that's, I think they, they call it, you know, the age of reason. Of course, Darwin was a little before that and all that. But this whole world of the ancient world was fading away into this now very aggressive industrial, you know, steam engines and trains and cowboys and Indians and all this stuff. And of course the America now that we see and the entire world changed. And um, now we've just entered into a new era that is exceedingly high tech and it's going to continue to get more high tech. And I, I always like to bring this up because <clears throat> this model, this, this diagram here is very demonstrative of showing that we're living in a spiritual matrix. I don't care how high tech it gets. Um, you know, there's the, everything that we have uh, is, is organically coming from this earth in one way or another, no matter how we refine it, manufacture it, you know, chemicalize it, whatever we do or refine it. It's, it's clearly all coming from this incredible living vessel, you know, called the earth. And, um, it's pretty, pretty wild stuff and nobody escapes death. You know, we hear about cloning and all this stuff. And I could tell you <clears throat> the, the lower conscious mind is not us. And in Hebrew, there's, there's a text I always suggest to people. If you ever wanted to, I've probably sold a lot of these books. This is a heck of a book here. This is called the Share Hagilgum. Sharar means gate in, in Aramaic and Hebrew. And Hagilgum means cycling of the souls. And, you know, it's, it's a stunning book because this book talks about the fragmentation of souls that spirit becomes manifest in these bodies. And yeah. the lower conscious mind is very well known in mind control as the nefesh. Now they don't call it that word in mind control, but they're very well aware of it. <clears throat> What's the first thing that is done in any hierarchical situation? <clears throat> I don't care if it's military, <laughs> corporate, etc. It's called break them down and reinstill new rules and laws. And that's very valuable because you need to have that in structural situations. <clears throat> you know, an army or a police force has to respond to its, its calls. But what's interesting about this is all of us, even little children, the nef it's called the nefesh. It's the lower present personality. And this is really deep stuff because we're all, I, I always call our present personality or our minds, the, the, what we call our minds, is like the keyboard, the mouse, and the screen we interact with these computers with. But it's not us. And see, this is what the religions tried to do, but I think in some ways really sorely failed. This big thick dash lined up here is kind of the demarcation between what modern psychology might call the conscious mind below and the above this line is the so-called subconscious mind, right? That's, that's your older psychology and psychiatric models. But a much better metaphor would be this is the present personality. It's what we think and what we believe right now. And anyone listening – can say safely what we believed when we were little kids versus teenagers versus adults, young adults and mid on all the way up is constantly in a state of change. In fact, in mind control, just like look how they train dogs and horses. If you traumatize them, it's the carrot and the stick and you, they get pain if they do what you don't want and they get pleasure and reward when they do what you do want. That's what happens. So it's very simplistic and this is, you know, always what works. So 
the lower conscious mind is really again the interface like the keyboard the, you know like the steering wheel the the brakes and the and the pedal and the gas uh that are operating these miraculous bodies and here's what's even more interesting and this was known by many of your ancient tibetan lamas and yogis and mystics and christian mystics right there this third eye chakra is where that seems to operate through and in it's also known as the jupiter chakra well notice right here folks this little mark between the lip and the nose in the sefer Haggadah, it actually says the angel makes that mark right when they tie the spirit psyche and soul to the body at first breath and that mark is this divisional line we were just talking about that separates us from knowing. We can all go to astrologers and psychics and intuitives and Akashic record readers, and you'll certainly get something, but you'll never get it all. There is a exceedingly complex trail of experiential, you could say spiritual DNA, that seems to be connecting us. And this is the astrology. See, the astrology ain't us. It's the interaction in what we call time. There is no time. You know, I mean, look at the, the whether you're a flat earther or a round earther, the cycles of astrology, the, the, the rotation of the earth or the cycles, if you will, of the sun is clearly happening daily. And the synodic time that that happens, which is really just a fancy word for how long does it take the earth to rotate, right? So <laughs> sunrise, noon, sunset, and midnight are huge shifts. We feel it every day, whether we're sitting in front of our computers or not. We are affected by the daily cycles of the diurnal, nocturnal cycles. Well, here's the point and where I'm going with all this is that our reality is based in time on the celestial cycles here. A month is a lunation, right? A year is, of course, today is the New Year's, right? Happy New Year, everybody. So, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're taping this here on, on the first day of 2023, which is all arbitrary. Calendars, time, it's all real. And, you know, humanity has been very smart to make calendars and divisions of time, but it's all celestial base. It's all based on the astronomy of where we live. If you put us on a different planet and our reality structure were to be changed, our whole reality of and perception of time would change. Proof in fact is if you take a child and you put them in a different culture, they'll speak the language. Look at even ourselves. If, if someone goes and moves to England or to the South or to the North, they'll sooner or later start taking on the traits of the language. They'll start having the accent. They'll start taking it on. We're all impressionable beings. And that is what we're talking about here. The nefesh. It's like silly putty. It, it sticks. It's like a hard drive. It can, data can be written on it. It's, you know, an analogy. So we are not our conscious minds in the lower world always wants us to believe that, you know, he with the most, who, he who dies with the most toys wins, right? You, know, you see that on the bumper stickers. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, the physical world, how many people have we seen die in our lifetimes? And do they take anything with them? No. The attorneys are here fighting over, well, that's mine and this is mine. It's all get, you know, get, get, get. And, and there's nothing wrong with having our, you know, physical clothing and food and shelter. We all need it. But on the other hand, it ain't us. And everybody's killing each other over it or suing each other, at least. And uh, the bottom line is nobody's taking nothing with them other than the consciousness that they gained. And the theory of Vedic astrology, and this is where I was going with all this, is we keep incarnating up until we connect the lower portions, if you will, of the... Nefesh, it collectively seems to gather all these lifetimes to where consciousness, as we might call it, or spiritual connectivity to the upper soul happens. See, if you look at this is the Nefesh, which is also ruled by the moon and Nadi astrology. Then you have the Rosh, which is also synonymous with just spirit. And, you know, doctors will agree with me. <laughs> Once the spirit leaves the body, I don't care how much you defibrillate, I'm going to 
care what you inject them with, you're not going to keep them alive. You know, the spirit vacates the body. And that's an area that, you know, some of the PSYOP stuff that's been going on in very secret military stuff and governmental stuff in the secret worlds uh, that they've been playing with is how do we take the lower conscious memory and reimpregnate that into a body or a vessel that acts like one at least. And that I don't think is ever going to be fully uh, ever be done like divinity does it. I, uh, they're going to try. They're going to keep trying. There's been a lot of movies about that. Uh, Tony Goldwyn and Arnold Schwarzenegger played in one. It was really interesting, but long story short, notice this guy right here. Saturn is just above what we might call our conscious self-awareness. This is that mark right here on our lip, this big thick dashed line that divides us from the upper conscious knowing. Every one of us have had deja vus. We say, well, geez, I, I know this person or geez, this, that, what have you, because we're blocked. And for some reason that we've been kept from knowing who we truly are. Now, there's a lot of theories why that is. I'm not going to sit here and say I know why, but I will tell you this, something about the angularity of the earth has a lot to do with this. And there's a couple of little points here called the north node of the moon and the south node of the moon where eclipses happen that seem to play a big part in this. I don't think they play all of it, but they certainly play a part in it. Um, the North Node, see, when the sun and the moon and the earth align, we get eclipses, right? Everybody's heard of eclipses. They're very mysterious. And they call it the head of the dragon and the tail of the dragon. They're, they're not planets. They're mathematical points where this happens. And the ancient Egyptians, the Chaldeans and, and the ancient Rishis and, you know, they're called spiritual people in India and Tibet. They knew about this stuff and they knew that the, Eclipses actually started at the North and South Pole, and they serpentined around. They're called the Cero Cycles. There's been books written about it. And so there's very mysterious things about these portals, if you will, of time or celestial alignments that have huge effects. You and I will die, and everyone listening will die, when K2 aspects the planet of karma, Saturn, in the birth chart, and the north node aligns with Jupiter and Mars. See, those are the chakras that keep the body's flow, the etheric energy flowing through the body. And what's interesting, you know, I've seen disease. I've seen it in young people, old people. And being aware of these can sometimes... Uh, you can, you might be able to circumvent it, but a lot of times you can't. Um, because we're all going to exit this body known as death. So it's very mysterious. I think if the axis, we hear this old legends about saints and prophets and people of old used to live 700 years, 300 years, 500 years in the Bible, different places. And that may be true because, uh, if you change the angularity of the earth, you there there's ancient legends where the the moon never had phases it it always was bright or it was mostly bright most of the month and um so this is all celestial alignments that seem that no astronomer fully understands i certainly don't i mean you you figure out why the earth is sitting at approximately a 23 degree 44 minute angle there's not a guy in the sky with a string you know running it around the sun <laughs> uh, you know this this is pretty deep stuff and it ain't gravity either um and you look at the entire solar system it is like a locked standing wave and it seems to have changed like there's some people who believe the Moon was drug here by, you know, some, some celestial events or potentially, you know, extraterrestrials. I, I, I think there's something very mysterious going on with the moon. Um, and it, it doesn't seem like it may have always been that way. So this, this earth may be a place where souls come to purify and rectify experiences, both good and ill and all points in between. So that's that's the way I look at astrology. I don't think we are astrology. I, I think we are in a matrix here of the soul that is really quite interesting. Wow. Very fascinating, uh, Jeff. And if you want to pull up that video, it's in your email. I sent it oh, to awesome. you. Oh, awesome. I sent it to you, and you can go ahead and share it to your screen. And, oh, yeah. Uh, but, yeah, I, so everybody yeah. that's listening, we are – 
we're listening, we're talking with uh, Jeff. Well, are, I'll, I'll go get it up and then I'll stop sharing for a minute while I get it up. And then, you know, we can, but, do but that. you can go to his website, which is jeffharman.com. And I'll give the links to everything in the description below that everything that's connected and tied with Jeff Harmon. And one thing I have found very interesting and with the moon, my, my wife is a psych nurse. You know, and oh, of course, cool. of course, we know the moon uh, is tied with, um, it's tied with the 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 monthly women's uh, menstrual cycle, and oh, and my wife being our psych nurse, and I'm sure law enforcement also, and I was I was military police, and I saw this also, cool. and my wife does too. When there every time there's a full moon, there's chaos. There's always chaos. <laughs> There's got to be some kind of connection with the psyche and the and the moon, especially when it's a full moon. It's almost like it's it's artificial in nature. And and did it get towed here? You know, is there some type of I think David Icke called it the moon matrix. You know, what is going on? Is that's what is that people talk about, especially on ancient aliens and stuff that yeah. that that we have. I'm, I'm looking for your video. Sorry to interrupt. Is that, it on uh, email. is that beyond the forbidden at gmail dot com that's wrote, it uh, that's it and okay. and i sent the last looks one. like there's a zoom link but i don't see it my email i they switched our email over to this crazy outlook and i hate it it uh let me just see it looks like there is a video there you're right where the heck is it uh it'll oh there the it attachments. is attachments it'll be in the wow attachments. that's so cool let me Click. see it let me get it i gotta download it i sent two find. and and the second one is the one where yeah. i cropped and kind of zoomed in a little bit uh huh. All right. Give me just a minute here. Ah, I see it. Let me drop that on my desktop. Oh, cool. So, and then let me go to the first one. So, yeah. Well, that's really cool. I love it because, um, if you want, you can see. go and share that because I don't think we, I don't think it shows anything. Um, if it does anything like social security, I don't think it does anything like that. I can crop that out in post-production, but I don't think it does though. Yeah, yeah. If you want to go and share that, you can share that to the screen. Looks like I got it. Yeah. Give me just a minute here. I'm just getting everything. So you don't have to watch me do that. Okay. So I got that done. Now let me share the screen here. Um, and let me get rid of that there. Hang on. All right, there we go. That's my dog that just died. Wow. I got to tell you a quick story. A lot of people don't believe animals have, you know, psyches and spirits. And let me tell you, a lot of people do. But uh that's Shelby. She well, love Shelby. She was the, you can see what a beautiful dog she yes. was in terms of her personality. You look at her eyes. What's interesting is she died. And I really was so attached to that dog. And I took off on my motorcycle after she died. And I just went for a ride down by the ocean. I said, I, I just got to, you know, get away and, you know, decompress after that. And later that night, I, I made a, a meditation. I said, you know, please, angels, take this dog and bring her to a dimension. She was such a good soul, such a great dog. And do you know that she came to me and another person I was wow. with saw it. They it, literally, she came and she was rubbing all around me on the astral plane and I'm sitting up having a cup of coffee you know, at a table and wow. she came all around me and the person I was with said, Oh my God, I see Shelby. I said, I know I see her too. And she was, ran and ran and ran. And then she took off and that was it. I haven't seen her since. So, wow. you know, if we get in touch, we are so much more psychic and in tune than we know we are. And, you know, there's a lot of wonderful psychics and intuitives that I work with. I have them as clients. I love it. And it's so fascinating. But let's, let's, uh, you try, know, it's so another one on the right. Try that one on the right. I think the Is one on the, the one? I think the other one I zoomed in a little bit more, I believe. This I think, one. Oh, I think okay, that one I yeah. cropped. I think I cropped that one and zoomed in okay. a little bit. Yeah. Let's take a look at that. So here it is. Wow. You can kind of see that little white dot. See the white dot? Yeah, right, right there, right? Right there. I believe it's right yeah, in that vicinity. Yeah. And you will see it shoot up kind of like a shooting star somewhere right in that area. See it? See it moving? Oh, yeah. Wow. Oh, yeah. I do. And then it. Wow. I, this was last spring, probably in Wow, February, that's really February, cool. March. I thought it made more of a spark. 
I thought uh, it did. Oh, I saw it. I saw it. Wow. That's, that's really cool. What, 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 one of the nurses yeah. says, it kind of looks like a UFO. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Right wow. up my alley, baby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's cool. Wow. Amazing. Amazing. Wow. So, so yeah. So let's, so it's obvious. Let me see. Or one thing I don't understand, Jeff, is, um, okay, you broke down astrology very well and, and everything. I, I believe that was the Kabbalah tree, correct? Or similar? It's a tree of life. Yeah. Tree I mean, Kabbalah is kind of a pop term, you know, yeah, that's come, yeah, kind of come in over the last 20, 30 years, which is cool. But, you know, you know, of course you have to say it the right way, the Kabbalah, right? But, <laughs> but, uh, you know, and that's become a cult too, you know, not that I don't know a lot of people who are wonderful in that, but, um, it's really just ancient spiritual knowledge. What I do like about using diagrams like that, it's a way for us to grasp these very, very complex and very, you know, exceedingly detailed, you know, concepts in kind of a, a a model that we can put our minds around. That's what I like about diagrams like that. So I wrote this, so I wrote this down because I was just doing some research, research for the show. And you, you broke a lot of this down very, 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 very well. And so, so it's obvious that numbers and mathematics are a primal force behind astrology in, in, Mm. in a roundabout way. Right. And it's even, and it's even known in the scientific community that numbers and mathematics make up everything in our existence. (coughs) The binary code of ones and zeros is talked a lot with certain scientific figureheads. And many believe that binary code can make up everything in our physical reality. So what I'm saying is, is it possible Mm -hmm. that we are actually in some type of matrix like simulated reality that would explain a lot when it comes to astrology, Jeff? Philip K. Dick at the convention back in the 1970s talked mm. about we were living in a computer program for reality. His, yep. and he quoted, we are living in a com- computer program for reality. And the only clue we have to it is when some variable is changed and some alteration in reality occurs. So mm. I guess, so do you think it's possible, Jeff, that our entire existence may be like that of a matrix or some type of artificial simulated version of reality, not technically like a computer game. I know it sounds far fetched. No, I, but, I but think you're. I think it's, you're, I think computer you're touching on. Yeah, I, I think it's an overused word like simulated simulation and and a computer game reality. I think it's much more deeper, but something similar. Yeah, you're bringing up really good stuff here because, you know, Philip K. Dick, for anyone who doesn't know, and I'm glad you brought him up, he's the one who wrote, you know, the original movie, uh, Blade Runner, you know, which had um, Rudger Hauer, which I loved. I actually met Rudger Hauer. He was eating an ice cream cone in Malibu. He's a nice guy. He passed away. Good actor. But, um, uh, you know, and Harrison Ford, of course, was in that too, and many other great actors, but, um, directed by Ridley Scott. But that whole genre is, is a thing. Even Terminator, you know, is, is, is a offshoot of all of this stuff that's encroaching upon us, which is artificial intelligence and, um, the whole simulated world, you know, you're you're really touching on some great stuff because the movie Avatar is now out and Avatar was such a huge hit. I actually wasn't really crazy about the first one because, you know, I mean, Cameron is a wonderful writer. I mean, God, look at the movies he's, he's done, yeah. Terminator and Titanic and so, so many others. But Avatar ended up being a cowboy and Indian movie, just a modern one. But it, it's its concept is really ingenious, and I think that's what struck a chord. And the new Avatar is coming out, and it's sure to be a, a big, big hit. A lot of people will see it. And it's not unlike the model we were just talking about. But, uh, you know, let me go back to that. When you look at, see, the Share HaGilgum, which is an astounding text, in the Aramaic and Hebrew. And I also want to bring in, too, the Vedas. And people have heard of the words the Vedas. In fact, that's where uh, it's a collection of texts in ancient India. And 
Uh, in fact, here, I'll put it on the screen. The Vedas are, there's many types of Vedas. So people who don't know, there's the Samhitas, there's the Rig Veda, the Yajur Veda, the Black and White, the Artha Vedas, there's the Brihat Samhita. There's just this plethora of eyeball crossing documents that are in India. In fact, there's so many. They, they talk about, uh, the Mahabharata is another yeah, one. Many the people know. and stuff like that. Yeah. Manas, that's right. And the, uh, the gunas and the types of souls and all this stuff is really deep stuff. And I love it. Um, in fact, there, there's certain texts that are just mind blowing that talk about these classifications of souls. There are some souls who are ignorant. They come here and they get incarnated. Um, and they're very violent and they're very evil. There are others that are somewhere in between. There are others that are very enlightened. So this world is exceedingly complex. And back to the avatar theory here, uh, the Shari HaGilgam is one text that breaks it down, I think, into a Western model that makes a lot more sense. And that is that we have an upper divinity of the soul, which isn't like our minds are, you know, you and I are communicating in English, someone in another world. You know, I mean, you, you travel this world is listen to the languages. They're, they're mm-hmm. fascinating. All the different phonetics and ways of expressions and even the order, which like we'll, we'll say, Oh, the red car. No, they'll go the car that's red you see, in a different language. So it's all about communication of psychic you know, you could say intention or free will. So this, this body back to the avatar thing, you know, you, you, and this is really deep stuff because the tree of life, they actually say, here's, here's another way of looking at this. They actually say Saturn, when we enter this particular realm or dimension, which of course is earth, right? Um, that Saturn is the reason we were born. Now in ufology and, you know, Psychic stuff and all this thing. Everybody knows in astrology, Saturn seems to be a very important planet. Well, look at its glyph. All the planetary glyphs. This is really cool stuff. Let me show you another uh, diagram. Yeah, this one right here. This diagram really shows it quite accurately. This is, of course, the heart chakra. We all know our hearts and our lungs mm-hmm. and our spleens and all the important things start right about here, right? And all the rest of the organs in the lower abdominal cavity. So dad puts seed where in mom's womb. And you just demonstrated we can take dad's seed and put it in mom's womb separately. Yep. Yep. Okay, just like the farmer puts the seed in the ground. And then here's what's cool. This is the philosophy behind the ancient types of astrology. Spirit becomes manifest on the four elements. So for people who are Christians, you know, the, the, the cross is very symbolic in Christianity, but it's also been exceedingly symbolic since the beginning of time because it also represents sunrise, noon, sunset, and midnight. It also represents the four archangels of physical creation, which is Raphael for the air, Gabriel for water, Uriel for um, the, the earth. And of course, most importantly, Michael for fire. See, so the Eastern horizon is Michael, you know, and then you got Gabriel, Raphael and Oriel. So really these are, and you know, scientists laugh at this stuff. I know I used to teach a physics class back in the eighties and it was really interesting to look at the left brain categorical, you know, things of, of atoms and molecules and the atomic tables and, or I should say the, um, you know, the, the elemental tables, so on and so forth. And, and then you look at spirituality. It's, it's completely different. You know, everything's trying to be put in a square box over here. And yet the mathematics and the codes of angels are so far beyond that. We're just, it, it shows the finiteness of our minds. So anyways, long story short, spirit becomes manifest on this rolling ball called the earth. And if you're a flat, at Earth, it's still happening. So this is what's interesting is spirit manifest. Well, why am I telling you this? All the rest of the glyphs of the planets come from the circle, which is the seed of creation, also known as the stars and the suns. And this is another little interesting digression here. It may be that the stars that we see, you know, astronomy is telling us, you know, they're gas clouds and they're stars with masses and black holes and all this yeah. stuff, which is, I'm sure, all true. 
But I think they're portals to the upper dimensions. Many scientists are scratching their heads going, you know, it's maybe the stars aren't nuclear. Maybe, maybe they're fission. Maybe they're electric, you know, the electric universe. There's all these different theories out there. They may be portals and very complex, multidimensional portals. What's up, guys? Michael James with Beyond the Forbidden. Do you want to receive extra content that's not viewed anywhere else? Support Beyond the Forbidden on Patreon to receive plus content that is only exclusive to members of Beyond the Forbidden. Content like the full two-hour podcast, bonus shows, full-length video interviews, behind-the-scenes footage with guests, and much more. So what do you have to lose? Go to patreon.com forward slash beyond the forbidden. That's patreon.com forward slash beyond the forbidden and become a member of Beyond the Forbidden for just five bucks a month. And also check the description for the links.